Hi, my name is Fernando Gutierrez Ursua, uh, and I'm going to be presenting um, a summary of my paper on the critical comparison of assessment codes for a steel moment resistant frame. The motivations behind this work, first of all, as we know, um, we have observed in previous earthquakes that existing steel moment resistant frames have shown deficiencies, uh, including inadequate ductility capacity and also a lack of design uh, for resisting lateral loads. Uh, in particular for Europe, there is also a lack of uh, updated code provisions in order to allow us uh, the assessment of these kind of structures. So the main objective of this project is to provide a comprehensive quantitative comparison of the Eurocode A3 with respect to its American equivalents, in particular uh, to referring to steel moment resisting frames. The methodology followed uh, for this work was, first of all, uh, we worked on the direct comparison of the capacity limits that are established in the codes, and actually most of this paper is focused on the capacity limits themselves, uh, also known as acceptance criteria in the American codes. Uh, however, since many of these capacity limits are depending on the demands or also could be depending on each other, um, we develop numerical models of case study structures in order to test or to understand better these comparisons. Uh, then uh, for this purpose, uh, we also carried out a probabilistic based comparison of these uh, code based capacity limits. In order to understand better the comparison between these codes, we need to understand how they have evolved through the last decades. Uh, in this case, both the Eurocode 8 Part 3 and the American ASHA 41 have evolved from the FEMA 273 and the FEMA 356. Uh, uh, in the case of the American regulation, it has continued to evolve to the ASHA 4113 and the current ASHA 4117. However, the European regulation hasn't evolved in the same way. Uh, also, there are efforts uh, nowadays in order to issue a new version of the Eurocode 8 Part 3. So, uh, in this paper, uh, we assume an equivalency between the limit states or performance levels between the Eurocode 8 Part 3 and the HA41. Uh, in this case, the damage limitation is assumed to be equivalent to the immediate occupancy limit state, significant damage to life safety, near collapse to collapse prevention. Uh, this uh, equivalency or this assumption is uh, uh, founded on the qualitative comparison that is found both in the European and the American regulations. They are very similar for this typology of structures. Uh, the first thing that we have to notice is that the codes have not evolved in the same way. Therefore, for example, in this case, the European regulation lacks of significant amount of data that the American regulation has uh, satisfactorily included through the years. In this case, for example, the definition of GIL rotation itself in the European regulation is not given. So basically, or typically what is done is just the mechanical relationships uh, are, uh, or typical mechanical relationships are assumed. Uh, in the case of the ASHA 4106, they actually use also these uh, basic mechanical formulas. Uh, however, they incorporate other elements, for example, the consideration of the actual uh, forces into the, the yielding uh, rotation of the columns. Um, same case in the ASHA 4113. And actually in the ASHA 4117, there is a huge step towards the definition of these uh, theta y parameters based on extensive experimental data. In the case of the panel zones, none of the codes provide uh, a definitions for the yielding uh, deformations or distortions, except the ASHA 4117. Each of the codes um, provide deformation uh, control uh, capacity limits for each of the element typologies and also for each of the limit states. Um, one of the examples is here. This is the these are the capacity limits for the rotation in beams. As you can see, for example, we have the one for the Eurocode 8 part three here in the top. We have the ASHA 4117 here at the bottom. As you can see, the evolution of these limits has been towards a less conservative approach. Um, uh, however, this is also highly dependent on the slenderness limits that are established for, for these sections. It is actually hard to compare directly these numbers since the slenderness limits 
are different for each of these code regulations. Uh, in this case, I am showing you uh, a comparison between the capacity limits for rotation in beams, um, both by considering uh, the web slenderness limits and the flange slenderness limits. When we consider the web slenderness limits, we can observe that the European regulation, that is in this case plotted with colors, uh, results in uh, uh, lower values of uh, capacity. So basically, uh, in comparison with the American regulation, um, the assessment with the European regulation tends to be more conservative in this case. Um, however, when we consider the flange uh, slenderness limits, we observe that this case is not necessarily uh, constant, as in some cases, we will find that uh, the American regulation provides larger capacity limits, while in others, the European regulation is going to do so. When it comes to compare the capacity limits for rotation in columns, we need to consider an additional parameter. In this case, uh, the actual load that is being imposed on the columns. Um, if we make this comparison, uh, we necessarily have to do it on sections in order to be able to variate the actual load that is being imposed on the column. In this case, for example, I selected four different uh, sections, um, just as an example. Uh, let's talk, for example, about these two that are both considered to be class one, according to the Eurocode 3. Uh, in the first case, we will notice that the American regulation provides larger values of capacity, while in the second case, the European regulation provides larger values of capacity in comparison to the American. Um, so probably one of the biggest limitations for the European uh, code is that there is a lack of considerations with respect to actual loads, other than just limiting uh, the actual loads to 30% of the capacity of the section. Um, in the case of the panel zones, there are actually no capacity limits or explicitly, explicitly defined capacity limits for uh, in the European regulation. Uh, however, there is a restriction of not having a plastic deformation for the first limit state. Therefore, it could be considered as a capacity limit itself when comparing to the capacity limits provided by the American regulations. In this case, for example, uh, uh, this is the gray line that compares to this green line. Uh, we can see that the European regulation uh, probably exhibits uh, more conservative values for these limitations. So uh, we decided to take these limits and to compare them in actual um, case study structures. In this case, we use two buildings, a three-story building and a nine-story building corresponding to the SAC project. Uh, in this case, the Boston pre norwich uh, buildings. So we mod model them in open seas by considering a continuous plasticity approach for the steel in the columns, um, a long plasticity approach for the, for the beams, and also the sea source uh, modeling approach for the panel zones. Um, we perform a, a fragility analysis uh, based on incremental dynamic analysis. Uh, we use the average spectral acceleration as intensity measure, and we consider 22 site-independent ground motions based on FEMA P695. Uh, in particular, we monitor uh, local engineering demand parameters, in this case, rotation in beams, rotation in columns, and distortion in panel zones. Uh, the first thing that we observe is uh, how the actual loads actually change the yielding uh, capacity of the columns. In this case, I'm showing you the fragility curves uh, for the yielding of every single one of the columns in the three-story building and every single one of the columns in the nine-story building. In gray lines, you can see every single one of these uh, columns. In particularly, in black lines, you will see uh, those columns corresponding to the bottom story. As you can see, for the three-story building, all of these uh, uh, fragility curves follow more or less the same path, uh, basically because the overturning effects or the uh, additional actual loads imposed on, this, on these elements are not significantly reducing the capacity of, of, the, of the element. However, you can see that in the case of the nine-story building, uh, 
every single one of these curves uh, is different. So the five bottom columns, they are located at different values of um, intensity measure, or the median is located at different values of intensity measure. Uh, and this is because the columns located uh, externally will uh, develop its yield and rotation earlier due to the additional uh, actual loads that it's been subjected to. In this slide, I'm showing you the fragility curves for each uh, type of element in the three-story building. In this case, for example, this plot shows uh, the fragility curves for the beams, for, or for the most fragile beam, for the most fragile column, for the most fragile uh, panel zones, and also for the system fragility that corresponds to the most fragile element of all. As you can observe, when we compare uh, the first limit state between the European and the American codes, in this case, the European uh, being represented by a solid line, uh, you will notice that the European regulation results in lower values of capacity in comparison with any of the uh, American regulations, as uh, the panel zones have a, a stricter uh, capacity limits for these elements. When we consider the other two limit states, in this case, uh, the second and third limit state, uh, you can notice that the opposite happens. In this case, the European regulation is actually one of uh, the codes that exhibits the largest values of uh, capacity. In this case, because the panel zones do not have limits and because the columns do not consider uh, the interaction with the actual loads, which results in the European regulation uh, uh, to be the, the one exhibiting the largest values of capacities for the second and third limit states. For the case of the nine-story building, uh, we observe something similar for the first limit state. However, for the second and third limit state, uh, in this case, the nine-story building is not controlled by uh, the rotation of on the columns, but actually the the beams and this is because the the european regulation is not considering at all the contribution or the affectation of the actual loads again so we can see that we end up with very large values of capacity for the second and third limit state perhaps we we are overestimating the capacity of the building uh, when considering these two limits so um in conclusions uh, we can just summarize all of the things that I have mentioned by saying that the European regulation in comparison to the American ones when assessing existing steel moment resisting frames might result in lower values of capacity for the first limit state because we don't have, a, sorry, because we have a restriction uh, to develop plastic deformations in the panel zones. However, in the case uh, of the second and third limit states, uh, we see the opposite trend since uh, we are not considering the actual effects uh, in the capacity of the columns and also we are not considering any capacity limits for the panel zones. So some of the most urgent deficiencies that we have identified for the Eurocode 8 part 3 in the assessment of steel moment resisting frames are first of all uh, a, there is a lack of modeling parameters and capacity limits for all engineering demand parameters in this case beams, columns and panel zones uh, there is a lack of consideration for actual loads in the definition of the capacity for the columns and also uh, another addition that could be implemented that has been recently implemented in the American regulation is to include experimentally based capacity limits for uh, considering the, the beams and columns uh, capacity based on European steel sections rather than American steel sections. So thank you very much for your attention. Please let me know if you have any questions.